Well, hi everyone. I'm John Rathlin with my review of AEW Fighter Fest 2020. Now, this wasn't a bad show. Was it a perfect show? No, there's really no such thing as a perfect show, though AEW, I will still say, has by and large been better from week to week than the weekly NXT has been. But that's my opinion. I'd love to know what you guys have to say in the comments about Fight for the Fallen. So, what did I not like about this show? I'll get into that here in a little bit, because actually for a while, this was a pretty damn good show. And overall, actually was one of the better episodes of Dynamite that AEW has done in the last number of months. So, Shivani is at home because of, you know, waiting for test results. Apparently he's fine, but okay, cool. We get Taz, JR, and Excalibur on commentary for the first hour, and then Jericho joins commentary. And uh, we have Sonny Kiss getting a big entrance. And you know what? Good. He gets a big entrance, I believe, with some of the Jacksonville Jaguar cheerleaders. This was good stuff. Made him feel like a big star. I've been a big fan of Sonny Kiss since they first introduced him and since I was able to see him actually be featured as, you know, more than a comedy act because that's what they were using him in, basically, in some of the Battle Royals. The guy can go. The guy can work. I want to say right now, you don't have to be a fan of the wrestler if you don't want to be. But if any of you fuckers are going to be homophobic or anything or transphobic on my uh, in the comment section, you're going to be fucking banned. You can think that way if you want. It's fucking stupid to think that way. It's toxic to think that way. I say that as somebody that used to think that way, but that's fucking stupid. So please keep your fucking bigotry in, you know, in your goddamn head. Or maybe take it, get it out of your head, and actually realize that people, if they are consenting adults, should be allowed to be who they are. So, anyway, enough of being on my soapbox. How was this match? Sonny Kiss versus Cody Rhodes. I'm calling him Cody Rhodes because he's Cody Rhodes for the TNT Championship. How was this match? Pretty damn good. Sonny Kiss really can go. He is a damn good worker. A really good worker. Um, and Cody was much more heelish here. Now, he hit some, you know, quick moves here for a bit. I really liked how the start of this because Cody was showing more aggression, but then... Sonny, like, took over, hitting some moves, throwing Cody off his game, even hitting the crossroads at one point. Some really good stuff. A 450. He hits a 450 better than most people. He really hits a damn good 450. Um, and then Alabama slam on the ramp by Cody. This was good shit, though. He had a gringo killer variation. Ouch. That looked pretty damn painful. And then Cody continued to work, you know, a little more heelish. Took the turnbuckle pad off. Did some good stuff. Sonny looked like he might, you know, pull this out. I had a feeling there was no chance Sonny was going to win, but Cody kept it competitive, but in the end, Crossroads 1, 2, 3, and show respect at the end. That was nice. Good way to start off the show. The TNT, you know, open challenge that's been happening, you know, people answering it. I've been liking this. It reminds me of what John Cena with the U.S. Open, uh, U the U.S. Open Challenge, the U.S. Championship Open Challenge. That was some pretty good stuff. And I think that if they can take the right people and elevate them and build up some good feuds, Cody's not going to hold it forever. He's probably going to drop it in the next pay-per-view, which I believe is all out. But this was good, and I'm glad to see Sonny Kiss being featured. They're treating him like a star, and maybe this can be a way to build him up in a singles program. He is working in a tag team with Janela, but Sonny, I think, is the bigger star of that because Sonny actually is an athlete. So anyway, we go to FTR versus the Lucha Bros. It's a match that many people were looking forward to. And oh boy, after a little bit, now the match was fine at first, but there was a botch spot by the Lucha Bros, and I, I met, I met Penta, super nice, great guy, got this shirt from him at an indie show, really nice, him and Phoenix were in a really cool spot where Phoenix uh, kicked Aubrey, uh, because Aubrey was a referee at that time, and I think it was May of 2019, we were ready to rush the goddamn ring, it was fucking hilarious, I also wanted to make sure Aubrey was okay. But, yeah, Phoenix was all surprised, like, why in the world are people booing? Because you hurt Aubrey. Nobody hurts Aubrey because Aubrey, um, you know, lives in the state and we protect our own. So, anyway, despite that botched spot, and that was pretty damn bad. That was pretty fucking bad. Like, I mean, and botches do happen once again, but just fucking fold and just do something to make up for it. But they kept trying and trying, and it just didn't work. Um, Dax's chest was bleeding after a chop from Penta, or a few chops from Penta. That looked painful. I mean, it was, like, bleeding pretty bad. Um, a rolling DDT by Cash as he did, uh, dive outside. That was some good stuff. Um, and the action was good. Now, was this a great match? No. But was it nice to see these two teams working together? Yes, it was. And Phoenix is ridiculous. So is Penta. And I love, you know, FTR, the former Revival. Absolutely love those guys. And uh, Cash pulls off, or no, wait, I think it actually was Dax that pulled off 
uh, Phoenix's mask. One, two, three, and there we go. So FTR gets a victory, and you know it's they had to outsmart. Even though the Lucha Bros are kind of heels, FTR was a lot more heelish here, and that was a good thing. And then Butcher and the Blade, because they took uh, they they arrived with the Lucha Bros in the back of FTR's truck. The Bucks show up because they were there, you know, near the ring. Uh, the Bucks show up and super kick them, and then get the keys for the uh, truck. And then Kenny comes out with some beer to make a peace offering after pouring out the beer last week. And then they pour beer on Kenny, which kind of leads to Kenny snapping a little bit later. Then they couldn't get the truck started before the commercial ended, or before the commercial started, which was kind of funny. So then we get an uh, inner circle. Jericho talks about his Orange Cassidy match, saying that it was one of the best matches that, no, it wasn't, in my opinion. There were people that liked it, and that's fine. I don't care how many people want to get angry at me. I didn't think the match was that good. I don't care how good Orange Cassidy is in the ring. He will have his fans. He will have his detractors. I'm not saying that the guy doesn't deserve to be in wrestling. I just think the gimmick's fucking stupid. I think it's really fucking stupid. Was it the worst main event I've seen? No, but it wasn't that good. But there are a lot of people that liked it once again. Um, so he mentions the ratings and then calls himself the Demo God. I know that he's saying this just to work up, you know, the fans uh, between NXT and AEW, but I'm just going to say really quickly, and I'll probably do a full-scale rant about this at some point, the whole thing about the Wednesday Night War ratings. I want both companies to succeed. If one show is, or if one brand is better the, uh, you know, that week, I want them to uh, have the most ratings. But you know what com it comes down to? The fans winning. And as long as both companies are doing well, that's what matters. This is important to win. Yes, but you know what? AEW won for a whole bunch of weeks, a lot of weeks. And just because NXT's won three weeks in a row, Jericho, you already look like you're combing over your hair and that you took uh, tanning lessons from Final Destination 3, which I seem to be on a kick about. It's like I watched that movie recently. But seriously, Jericho needs to stop living like a midlife crisis dad and just realize that things are going to happen. But then again, he may be just stirring up some controversy, but... It's the fans that get upset about the Wednesday Night War ratings. Like, oh, no, you know. It's like, oh, well, NXT's better, AEW's better. You know what's uh, better? When we get both brands being healthy, that's what matters. I want AEW to win more often because I want NXT to step up their game. Because, again, I feel AEW has been better more often than not than NXT. That doesn't mean NXT has been rotten, but Dynamite just has more life to it. But that's all I gotta say. I'm gonna get off my soapbox there. He says, there won't be a rematch against uh, Orange Cassidy and da 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 By the way, the Inner Circle members, uh, you know, Sammy, you know, <laughs> boy, Sammy, I mean, I already ranted enough about him. Hopefully that therapy is working good, even though he shouldn't have had to have taken it, because he shouldn't have ever fucking said that shit in the first place. And guess what? At 21, 22 years old, you know not to say that shit even at 14 or 15. Just saying. Hager's there, so they have Jericho, basically, because Hager's not interesting at all. Santana and Ortiz. Here's Orange Cassidy. And he does the whole thumbs up, thumbs down thing after Jericho kind of rails against him and everything. He tells him to get out, of the, uh, get out of the arena, you piece of shit. And he does this and does this. And then Orange Juice and Oranges fall from the ceiling. Congratulations, you're doing something that the, the DX did to the McMahons uh, 14 years ago. And it wasn't even that funny then. And it's not the only, and what was it, they did, I think it was, uh, they did like a bunch of stuff. There's been a bunch of times where stuff's fallen on the ceiling. What, Cena and, Cena did that to Dolph Ziggler and uh, AJ Lee. WWE is the only one to do that. I mean, fuck, WCW 2000 did all the new blood stuff falling down. That got really annoying. In fact, that's actually what this reminded me of. This this just why just it wasn't it it, it wasn't good. I mean whatever. It, it, we're getting Orange Cassidy versus Jericho obviously at the pay per view. Where Orange Cassidy will win. It was stupid, but whatever. It wasn't for me. We then get. I don't know why Marco Stunt is ever allowed to a be uh, near a wrestling ring or be allowed um, mic time. He calls Jericho you know stupid and stuff like that. And then Luchasaurus talks about in sixty five million years no dinosaur has been able to face the elite. Well, that changes tonight. And then uh, Jericho joins commentary, doused in orange juice, and calls uh, JR, OJR, which was funny. Uh, there will be a rematch. JR was trying so hard not to bust up laughing. So here we go, Jurassic Express versus the Elite. So it's a five-man tag match and one little twerp. I'm sure Marco Stunt is a very nice guy, and I'm going to keep this brief right here. But when I watched, you know, last uh, night's Dark, 
and saw Michael Naka, 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 get the, just fucking get rid of that guy, or at least don't put him in the ring, put him as a trainer or something, just put, put him as a manager, something, I mean, they already got enough managers as it is, but it gets him out of the fucking ring, Nakazawa versus Stunt, the most embarrassing match I've seen in 2020, and that includes a lot of shit that WWE's done, and they've done a lot of embarrassing shit this year, but that was embarrassing. Marco Stunt is an embarrassment to watch in the ring. His matches are actually more embarrassing to watch than Sable's. Because Sable, at least, you know, Sable at least didn't last all that long. And Sable was, you know, shit in the ring and not a very nice person backstage. But this, her matches were very much taking place in the vacuum. Marco Stunt, his, his matches actually make me think that maybe Jinder Mahal's WWE title reign wasn't so bad. And maybe I've been a little bit too harsh on some others because it's not believable. I don't care what he can fucking do in the ring. It's not fucking believable. There are certain things I can take as far as silliness in wrestling. This ain't one of them. Besides that, this actually wasn't that bad of a match because you have Jungle Boy's future star, Luchasaurus, him and Jungle Boy work well together, and the Bucks, who I'm not the biggest fan of, <coughs> have been in one of my favorite matches of the year, and Omega is a little more angry. Uh, J uh, Jericho did say at one point, uh, it's like a, a dinosaur, I don't believe he's 65 million years old, I want to see his birth certificate. And then Hangman Page is backstage uh, with the graphic unlicensed bartender, which popped me, FTR joins later. Um, and then he says, oh, he's drinking buddies, well me and Jer are drinking buddies, Excalibur, can I come? Jericho, no! Um, and the driver 98, Tiger driver 98, uh, stage spot, ouch. And a stunted destroyer. The fact that that idiot is allowed to hit anything is embarrassing. And one wing angel, one, two, three. And then Omega beats the shit out of him a little bit more. So Kenny Omega went up a few rungs as far as like somebody that I root for. Except maybe, you know, he's a bit of a rancid individual. He needs to disassociate himself from that, you know, idiot. And you know who I'm fucking talking about, Mr. Chase and Rance. So moving on from that. We get, you know, Omega's all upset. We're obviously getting Omega going back to the whole cleaner thing that he did in New Japan. She does. English has improved dramatically. Challenges anybody to come and face her. Moxley then talks about, um, the main event talks about uh, the torn bicep of Cage and how he's going to target that. I believe he's also wearing a Danny Havoc shirt, which I'm not familiar with Danny Havoc, but I know that he, uh, I believe he was a hardcore wrestler, a CZW wrestler. Forgive me. I'm not trying to disparage of that i don't really know much about him but a lot of people did tweet out about him apparently he meant a lot to moxley it was cool that he did that and i believe he put up a shirt uh, or that shirt's on sale and the proceeds go to uh help his family which is really really nice i thought it was a classy move ali and brandy versus uh with dustin versus kenzie page and mj jenkins ali pins uh jenkins mj jenkins that's it that's an old name uh, Dasha interview with Nyla Rose, uh, with her new manager, Vicky, I vote for the wall, Guerrero. Whatever, it, it's fine. Nyla can cut a promo, though, that's the thing. And Vicky, I just, I just, it'll work, but Nyla can cut a promo on her own. I don't think she really needs it. But anyway, TNT title match next week. I don't know who the challenger is, I'm sorry if they announced it while I was cutting this review. Uh, Hangman Page versus Five of the Dark Order, because they won't get rid of this fucking bullshit Dark Order. This atrocious abortion of a gimmick. Ivelisse versus Diamante. Okay. Bit shocking they wouldn't put that on Dark, because they need more women's matches on Dark, but good on, good on these women, especially Diamante for getting featured on, um... On Dynamite, MJF in action, Young Bucks versus Butcher and the Blade, I believe Falls Count Anywhere match, and Jurassic Express, the two members that matter, uh, versus Jericho and Hager. <clears throat> and then Taz, Knox, Moxley, Knoxley, if you will, mentions about his wife, all that, da 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 And then Mox versus Cage, AEW world title match. I'm going to be very quick here. Mox kept targeting the bicep, Cage would use his strength. Cage is not that good. Um, he's not awful, he can move well for a guy that big. But I just, he's got a ceiling, and the ceiling was this. I think it's going to be, he's plateaued. Um, a pair of dimes shift, that's what I'm calling it. I know it's paradigm, but I'm just going to have some fun here. Uh, the arm bar, because Jericho said arm bar, arm bar, channel, uh, you know, going back to the original list of Jericho on that, I believe is, uh, you know, that late March, early April 1998 episode of Nitro. And then... Moxley keeps targeting the arm, targeting the arm, staring down at Taz, and Taz eventually throws in the towel for Cage, which is a bit weird, but okay. 
it gets Cage away, but then Cage is punching him with the arm. Uh, was he punching him with the same arm? I think he was punching him with the same arm that he just that Mox just beat up. Now maybe I'm wrong, but just the whole point is, is like he just he's just doing this. He's like it's nothing. Lights go out. Darby's here with a skateboard to Cage's throat. And then Cage is upset. He wants to get Darby, so maybe we get that match at some point at the pay-per-view. And then Mox can face somebody else. Overall, not that bad of an episode of uh, Dynamite, a.k.a. Fight for the Fallen. And it's nice that they are doing this, you know, and they're taking, you know, funds and giving them to people that are affected by the ongoing, ongoing, ongoing global, you know, pandemic. You know, the, the bullshit that's going on right now. Because people won't wear their fucking masks. Maybe wear your fucking masks and then we won't have this issue. Anyway, that's all I gotta say right there. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritland. I'll see you soon.